please welcome Bob Dean, ladies and gentlemen. Bob Dean. Everybody. Welcome. Happy to be here. <laughs> Politi political, political, <laughs> politically correct. I can't even say it anymore. Do people still go by that rule? You know, I was having drinks with my father in the Nashville, Tennessee airport. My dad was a world traveler through the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And uh, this was the 90s. And we're having a drink, and the waitress brings, uh, comes over to the table. My father says, Hey, sweetheart, can you bring us another round? And the waitress kind of scoffs and walks away and I said dad you, know, you can't really speak to service people like that anymore it's just it's rude it's not considered politically correct and my father was mortified he was like oh, well I certainly meant no disrespect the waitress comes back and puts the second round down on the table my dad looks at me and he winks and he goes thanks toots <laughs> <laughs> my dad was right I'm gonna say whatever I want does anybody remember when we got suntan right yeah. We'd sit around and cut off shorts, slathering ourselves in copper tone and Hawaiian tropic and iodine and baby oil. Man, we were so tan, even our black friends were tan. <laughs> but now the government says, stay out of the sun. The sun is not good for you. Well, I have a theory. The reason why the government tells us to stay out of the sun is because when you lay in the sun, you think clearly and you feel good. And when you think clearly, you feel good, you make decisions and you vote about things. The government wants us to stay. Because if we do stay out of the sun, the government knows it. We don't care that 50% of the people in the city that we live refuse to speak English. <laughs> I'm talking about who politically correct, I'll be politically correct. Nobody cares that the Persians and the Chinese are buying up every single piece of property in this county, and yet I still can't find a decent egg roll. <laughs> anyway. God, the older I get, the more loud, cynical, and just plain mean. I become, you know, something. I don't care. I laughed at work the other day. This kid goes, "Ooh, your face moved," and I was like, "Yeah." And this double chin is your future. <laughs> I am constantly yelling at little kids, "Get off of my lawn!" And I don't even have a lawn. <laughs> and God forbid, I'm in conversation talking about the '80s or '90s or the 70s, and some little chippy always pops up and goes, <laughs> I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> well, screw you. I used to say the same thing. I was a senior class favorite in 1979. It was who's who among American high school students. Student council member of the year twice. I was popular in a recently good student in college, and look at me now. I don't know the difference between save and save as. <laughs> I've been a bartender for 33 years. <laughs> Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. I am not there to charge your fucking phone. <laughs> Let me show you something. This is the only kind of phone that should be in a bar. Anybody under 30 even know how to use it? Okay, I'm sorry, ladies, you can stare at it all night long and suck your cheeks in, but it's not going to take a picture. <laughs> this is so easy. You get up from the bar, you walk over, you pick up this, you put a quarter in here, there's big buttons so you can dial with that big fat finger, and when you're talking, you can hear the person you're talking to. Because you might have a $700 dollars phone, but I can't hear a word of what you're fucking saying. <laughs> 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 it's like, it's hot in here, it's cold in here, the valley scratched my car. I sit dressing on the side, we're friends with the other, we want a booth. Please let's take off my glass, and I was over-served. <laughs> over-served my ass. My motto is, if you have an airbag, have another. <laughs> Here are people in bars, ladies and gentlemen. Here are white people in bars. Yes, we'd like to taste every one of your 26 lines by the glass, because we've recently been to Napa. And then we now belong to the Malibu Wineries Wine of the Month Club. We like something that's earthy, plummy, jammy, and cheap. Persian people, I just want to slap them. They're like, you read me the wine this. It is your job to read me the wine this. I do not read the wine this. It is your job to read me the wine this. Black people. 
I can't taste no alcohol in this. <laughs> Asian people are so interesting. They never, they only order water, but they take a hell of a lot of pictures of the food. <laughs> this is the same guy sat down the board the other day. He started ordering Spanish, and I was like, nope, sorry, bud. I only speak English. You call me a racist. <laughs> me. I'm a racist. I'm going to think of that. like the eighth time this week. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, I ain't no cracker racist. I am white. I'm Christian. I eat red meat. I smoke cigarettes inside my home. I'm gay. I don't speak a word of Spanish. And I live in Los Angeles, California. I'm a friggin' minority. <laughs> Y'all better start thinking about building a wall around me. It's about to snap. <laughs> well, I let the cat out of the bag. I'm homosexual. I'm a confirmed bachelor. Even to remember that term, confirmed bachelor. I'll never forget the first time I heard it. It was 1969 in the Dean household. The phone rings and I answer it. And it's my mother's best friend, Dorla. For college. She goes, Bobby, get your mother. Mom, it's Aunt Dorla. Mom picks up the receiver. She sits down, her eyes get really wide. She goes, which meant, get my Benson and Hedges, because this is going to be a long ass girl talk. So I get my Benson and Hedges, and I give her the zip out. When she pulls one of those out, she fires up the zip. She goes, Dory, I heard Betty's brother's a confirmed bachelor. And I'm like, Mom, what's a confirmed bachelor? And you would have thought I shot the dog. Her eyes get really white. And she goes, you, don't, you do not need to know what a confirmed bachelor is. It's none of your business. Why don't, you, why don't you go outside and lay by the pool? Get some sun. The sun is good for you. <laughs> it was 1969. There was no supervision. We love the sun. My mother, God rest her soul. No supervision. Eight screaming cub scouts jumping back and forth from the Bonneville station wagon. She's got on her tortoiseshell cat eye glasses with the big hair, smoking a bed and hedges with the windows up. <laughs> See, it's not unusual. <laughs> when I came out to my parents, I was 28 years old. It was Christmas time. And let me tell you what, coming out, no matter what television makes it look like, coming out is hard. It's tough. <clears throat> and I said, Mother, I have something to tell you. I'm a homosexual. She looked right at me and she put her hands on my shoulders, looked in my eyes, and she said, You're my son and I will always love you. It was very emotional. And then I said, Mother, I have something else to tell you. I really hate football. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea what a football family I come from. My dad was a captain, my mother was a cheerleader. My brother played, my friends played, I played, la la la. la. My mother, her eyes got really wide again. She looked at my dad, she looked at me, she looked at my dad, she looked at me, she looked at my dad. She said, Did you hear what your son just said? <laughs> He doesn't like football. This is an abomination, Robert. How could you not like football? What am I going to tell the neighbors? <laughs> Me and Dad, yeah, that's okay. You know, honestly, most of my, my buddies are straight, 100% heterosexual married dudes. But, you know, they have questions. I mean, who wouldn't? So I'm out drinking with a buddy of mine the other night. We're on our, maybe our third round of tequilas. We go outside and smoke a cigarette. And he very sincerely goes, Bob, can I ask you something? And he goes, uh, are you a pitcher or a catcher? <laughs> and I, I took a drag of my cigarette and I go, uh, you know, it kind of depends on how much scotch I've had. And he goes, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> and then he goes, can I ask you something else? And I'm like, what? And he goes, does the pitcher generally pay for dinner? <laughs> and I'm like, it's customary. <laughs> and then I said, let me ask you something. I said, how come you only pussy but you won't eat clams? And he goes, well, clams don't moan. <laughs> yeah, but I digress. I'm a bear. A bear in the gay world is a big fat guy with body hair. Man, anybody out there manscape? Anybody? Nobody? Good job, fellas. I tried finding an epilator to a back scratch from 83 and it hurt like hell. <laughs> yeah, I don't shave nothing. I fell asleep at the pool last year and aliens made a crop circle on my back. <laughs> you know, the two situation, my partner's favorite pillow talk is. <laughs> Yeah, 
it to the dead. Douchebag is my favorite word. Okay? Now, if you are taking your time in the crosswalk while I'm trying to turn right, and you are not pushing a baby carriage or in a wheelchair, and if you are texting while you're walking, you are a douchebag. Yeah. Thank you. If you park in a handicapped spot for one minute while you're running into the 7 Eleven to get you a pack of cigarettes, you're a fucking douchebag. <laughs> if you carry a dog in your purse. <laughs> right? You see it all the time, don't we? Beverly Hills. Constantly. <laughs> and I don't care what you think. If anybody out there really gives any kind of damn about what a Kardashian, a West, a Jenner, or what Sharon Osbourne is doing in support of them, you are a douchebag. Take a few Yeah. Anywho, who came up with the concept of compact parking spaces? <laughs> what does it mean to compact car? I drive a 25 year old Buick station wagon with the wood grain sides and a glass roof. And I'll tell you what, I can compact that son of a bitch anywhere. I want to. <laughs> I've been known to push a smart car out of the way more than once. But recently, this is serious, I was designated with driver's Tourette's. <laughs> and anyone in this room who has ever ridden a car with me can vouch for this. It's like, <laughs> Grandma's funeral was just lovely. There were so many people there, the flowers were beautiful. Get out of my way, you stupid fucking Chinese lady in a three series BMW that's obviously on an eight year lace court in my lane! But it was so sad. <laughs> I'm such a douchebag. That's my time. <laughs>